Okay, Jeremy. Thank you very much. So yes, um, I have to say they've given me a thing to walk up and down on, which is very tempting. I'm either tempted to do that or practicing my putting skills. I'm not sure which. Um, and I've never been captioned before. So the temptation to use words like anti-disestablishmentarianism, just to see if, oh, look at that. <laughs> Result. Okay, so how, do, how the heck do I choose a plugin? Um, I was very tempted to call it something else, but heck is fairly close to what I was thinking. Um, and you can put the emphasis where you like, really. Um, it's a pain, but um, just by uh, briefly, who the heck am I? Um, uh, yes, T-Boy um, to, for, for three years I spent being a, something called a solutions architect and there was a whole team of us and if any of you have an idea what, um, what one of those is, please let me know because we never worked out what it was. Um, although we did know, we did manage to hack, uh, piss off the, um, all the architects in the department next door because they'd spent eight years becoming an architect. And because we're IT, we just called ourselves architect, which is fine. Um, most of that time I was with BAA, the airport company, um, working on flight information systems, which are brilliant and fascinating, and working on Oracle financials, which are really, really dull. Apologies to any accountants out there. Um, I've been doing my own thing since 2012. And yeah, I play tennis, I sing, and I talk, which means I don't blog, really. Um, so that's basically what I do. Um, so what is a plugin? Um, hopefully most of you are um, um, aware. And that's WB Beginner's um, definition of what a plugin is. Um, don't need to paint notes on it because it's not very exciting. I would point out the, the words um, integrate seamlessly at the bottom. Um, I'd be tempted to put the word should uh, before that um, because they don't always, obviously, that's part of the fun. Um, but, um, um, yeah, let's go. So yes, the, um, uh, the, the um, far more basic than um, that kind of definition is, uh, um, is this. Well, actually, the plugin, if you're looking at the bottom there, is a plugin is what your site does. Now, this is a hugely oversimplistic um, split of the two, but the themes about your design and your layout and your colors and all the rest of it, and the uh, plugin is the bells and whistles and all the sexy stuff. Now, I'm sure lots, plenty of theme developers would argue otherwise, and yes, there's lots of themes that do clever stuff as well. But again, an overly simplistic view, but the point is, at some point, you will have to choose a plugin. So um, I'm not offering the definitive solution to choosing a plugin. This is a way, it's not the way. Um, so it's, uh, and I'll stress again, this is my get out clause. This is simplistic, it's um, generalized, and these are they're not rules, this is just guidelines and the way I've found it. My experience in WordPress, um, as I said in my intro, was um, just kicking the buttons until it did as it was told. Um, and or till I found out what the hell about that button did. Um, and I'm not offering a silver bullet, a, a solution to everything. Um, you're still gonna have to put the hard yards in. You, you've, it takes some work, it takes some effort, and takes some time to find yourself um, a plugin that does what you want it to do. So 55,000 plus plugins. I know I haven't looked at them all. Um, in fact, um, that was what it was last week. Um, I think it's, I checked about an hour ago, um, it was 55,840 now, and I was over looking, another one appeared. So there, there's, there's new ones coming on all the time. Um, so the question is, where do you go to find these dear plugins? Well, no big surprise there. WordPress.org is the place to look. Um, WordPress.org slash plugins is where you will find um, the bulk. But before you jump in, and start searching like crazy and so on and so forth, you need to think about um, what it is you're actually going to um, do with this here plugin. So you need to think and decide for yourself what you need a plugin to do. It sounds simple, but it's very easy just to leap in there and actually find something that looks like it might be and, 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 and set yourself off in totally the wrong direction. So make a list. It sounds, again, it sounds dead straightforward, but make a list of what you need a plugin to do for you, what you are looking for, the functionality you're looking for. And then expand the list. Um, try some different terminology because like any search routine, they're not perfect and you will find um, different terms come up with, very similar terms will um, come up with different um, answers. And once you've done that, uh, and you've got a list of terms, divide that list or divide the list of what you've got um, to do 
You've got must-haves, fine. You've got nice-to-haves. And you've got what I like to call wibnies, which are the wouldn't-it-be-nice-ifs. Okay, now the wouldn't-it-be-nice-ifs tend not to come from you. If you're, if you're putting a, a website together for a client or a friend or a group or whatever, they're, they're the really good ideas that tend to come up about between 24 and 48 hours before the thing's going live. <laughs> and some bright spark says, ooh, and you know what's coming. Because they say, wouldn't it be nice if it did this? And you go, yes, it would. And if you'd asked me about three months ago, we could have maybe done something about it. But now's not a good time. But if you can actually try to preempt those, and if it's a case of going through with a client or with yourself or your group you're working with and so on, and actually trying to identify those things, you'll find some of those things on the wouldn't be nice if. And you know, it takes a bit of lateral thinking and it takes a bit of thinking around, talking around the subject. But some of those things will be, yeah, actually, that's something we could really, really do with. And it might actually just steer, the, steer your search slightly. But be prepared to compromise. Yes, wouldn't it be nice if so lovely. Um, but maybe that's the phase two of the project or phase three or whatever. And particularly if you're getting paid for it, that's really nice because it actually gives you a, a, you know, a route to take. So you can say, yeah, we'll get you up and running, we'll get you live, we'll get you going with the basics, with the straightforward stuff you wanted. But we'll come back to that because that's a really nice idea and maybe when the thing's established, we'll, we'll, build, uh, we'll build the project or we'll make, a, we'll make a phase two. So don't do yourself out of a few, you know, of, of another um, stage to the... Um, the project. So, okay, you come up with a list of what you actually want to, to happen. Now, where do I look? Well, okay, we mentioned WordPress.org. Sorry, I'm waving my hands around. I should stick my hand in my pocket. Um, we mentioned WordPress.org. Um, and WordPress.org is a list, as I said, of 55,000 plus um, plugins. Great. However, there's plenty of people out there who are prepared to give you a list of the 10 best uh, plugins for something. Or the, um, this one down here, the beginner's one. 24 must have Word pr WordPress plugins for business websites. Now they're chucking these things out all the time. And they're great because they can actually do some of the filtering for you. Because A, they'll have chucked out some of the rubbish, which is always helpful. And B, if you've got a particular area you're looking for, that might actually give you a focus and give you some ideas of what some uh, uh, some plugins might do and might not, which is great. But bear in mind, some of these, or most of these, are commercial organizations as well. Now, if there's anybody here from those organizations is prepared to tell me it's not the case, I'm, uh, I'm quite, oops, sorry, bullshit alone. Um, I'm quite prepared to be told it's not the case, but there are vested interests at work here, so there may be sponsorships and there may be, um, I'm, I'm guessing, I'm, it's a pure guess, don't take me on uh, uh, that as a quote, I really don't know. But they're there for a purpose. They can be really useful in giving you some, uh, some pointers as to where you might go. But just bear that in mind. So, well, what do I search for? Okay, well, I'm gonna go back to the WordPress or you might have filtered down your list a little bit, but you go into wordpress.org plug slash plugins and you type in a term or a word. Now, put in a term or a keyword and so on and so forth, um, but, and look for clues in the first answer. Um, and try synonyms if you don't take, uh, takes, you the, um, takes you the way to go. Um, take, for example, uh, you start with general, very general terms if, you, if you're really not clued, uh, clued up, because you don't know necessarily the terms that uh, are the, the in words or the jargon terms that may be used for the area they're used for. So a lot of people search, for example, forms, because lots, uh, lots of websites need forms. And very quickly you find that actually a lot of them are split into, into contact forms and other forms. Um, so trying synonyms and actually trying to focus in your search is, is logical, but it's, it's a thing to do. I would also suggest, particularly if you're going back to revisit and do other, other sites in the future, it sounds terribly nerdy and, and, and the OCD, but take a note of the terms you used because occasionally it floats across your um, eye line. Oh, there's a uh, plugin I might use. I might not use it for this project, 
but I actually might need might need it later on. And six months later, you can spend ages going, now what the hell term was I looking for? Uh, and, I, and I remember looking, saw some, and, and you don't know where the hell you're looking. So it's worth taking a note. As I say, it's a bit nerdy and it's a bit anal, if you like, but it, it is, is effective. You can actually go back and, ah, well, I actually looked up contact forms. That gave me such and such and gave me somewhere to go. So look, what types, what types of um, plugins have we got? The vast majority of, no, that's not a fair. A lot of the plugins you'll see on WordPress.org are free plugins. Great. But they tend to be light versions. Why are they light versions? Well, they have some of the uh, functionality you need. And if you've got a very simple site and some very uh, straightforward ideas, that might be all you ever need. Good on you. Well done. Great. Um, highly recommended. It's free. Why not? However, you do see in the reviews, some of the people say, outrageous, they've done all this thing. It doesn't do all the things that we need it to. Well, yes, because people have invested a lot of time in developing these things. They obviously want you to, you know, some of them will go by donation and, and so on and so forth, but some people have got a living to make. So there are premium versions or the pro. So you'll, you'll often find um, something like um, contact forms has a light version, but also has a pro version. So I use something called calculated field form because it allows me to, um, or for one site I did, it allowed me to do spreadsheet style stuff with I could pick up fields and I can actually do equations and functions between fields and so on and so forth, which was quite fun. Um, and I had a mortgage calculator and all sorts of things built into it. Um, and it was quite fun to use and that was, I, pay, I paid a premium for it, but it was a one-off payment. Some of the other ones, some of the particularly popular ones like Gravity Forms, it's a subscription. And you can be paying, for one site, you can be paying $59 a year for that. But if that's what you need, you've got to pay $59, great. Don't, you know, <coughs> you can't do the whole thing for free, necessarily. So there's subscription ones. And then you have things like Woo, Woo, uh, can't even say it, WooCommerce, which is a freemium site. Freemium site is one where the basic, Plugin is free, but there are hundreds, possibly thousands of other plugins that have been built that are attached to uh, WooCommerce around it, which are payment ones. So you, the basic stuff you get free, but all the add-on stuff, so it's a plugin for a plugin, if you like, is a, is a, um, bless you, is, a, um, uh, is extra. So those are the sort of types of plugins you can get. Um, So how do I choose a good one? Well, cheapest advice you can get is word of mouth. And somewhere like this is a great way, a great place to do it. So the word camps, go to meetups. Edinburgh has a meetup. Glasgow has a meetup as well. <laughs> Which I might have something to do with. Um, and forums and blogs and so on. Great way to pick up free advice. Um, I'm personally very cheap. Um, I'm yours for a hot chocolate and a blueberry muffin, um, as you can tell. Um, <clears throat> however, don't take the piss. You know, some people are trying to earn a living, so that advice you know, may come with some caveats. Um, but equally, um, the, some of that advice might be skewed slightly, because if they're the person who's actually developed the plugin, that might be the one they're pushing. But you know, it's with all these things, it's a balance. Um, the other thing is, if you're going to um, uh, have a look at a, um, a search um, on WordPress.org, this is the sort of response you get. Um, you're gonna, the, the things to bear in mind, the things to look at, how many times has it been downloaded? Has it been downloaded twice or has it been downloaded gazillions of times? Because that might be a clue as to whether it's any good or not or whether how, how popular it is. Now, if it's brand new, obviously it might be very few. But this compressed JPEG one is one I've used um, a couple of times. Um, it's got 100,000 plus installs. Great. Well, that sounds promising. Um, now, next to it, slightly out of picture, is Smush, which um, has over a million. Just as it happened, that didn't suit my particular circumstances. That one did. But the fact it's got 100,000 plus was a good start. How recently updated? Um, and what do the forums and reviews say about it? Well. This is that um, uh, uh, compressed JPEG one again. Um, last updated nine hours ago. Well, that's promising. 
might be that there was something fundamentally wrong with it and they've updated it, but it's actually tested up to 5.0. So that uh, WordPress 5.0, well, that's encouraging. They're reasonably up to speed. Um, now, if it hasn't been updated for 18 months or a couple of years, you start thinking, is that because it's so rock solid that it's brilliant? Or is it because the developers just got really fed up and just gone on and done something else and they've lost interest? So it might work perfectly well, but if you do have a problem, you might not get the support that you were perhaps hoping for. And um, <coughs> the other place, of course, is, uh, the other thing you might want to look at is um, the reviews. Oh, the reviews, what joy. So um, here you are. Yes, yeah, I'm looking, I'm interested in the five star reviews. This one has 97 five star reviews, and you have things like fantastic, good plugin, very useful plugin, amazing plugin, and great support. Well, that's all kind of encouraging. That's good, good news. And certainly, for those of you in the last, last talk that Claire did, compared to the, the, the ratios of five stars to one stars of that Gutenberg um, example she gave, I'd say that's, that's looking quite promising. Um, trouble with five star reviews is, yeah, most of them very useful. So um, that third one down, excellent, not stingy on free version, compress about a thousand images monthly. Oh, well, if that's what I wanted, that's, that's pretty much answered my question. That's a, that's a good sign. A, it's telling me that's the free level, um, and B, that's all, I'm, that's all I'm really interested in it doing, result. However, I find this happens with more with themes than with, with plugins, right enough. Themes, uh, themes in particular, um, five-star reviews tend to be written by the, the developer's mum and the granny and their auntie Nelly and whatever, because they've said, just give me a five-star review because they'll bump me up the ratings. And the developers love five-star reviews. For you, maybe not so useful um, because they tend to be fairly straightforward. Fantastic, great, which is fantastic and great, but doesn't really tell you a great deal about it. So I've got a preference for four-star reviews because I'm weird like that. But <clears throat> the, the great thing is that word, but. They tend to come with, this is a great plugin, but. So this one says, great, only missing mobile apps integration. Well, if that's the bit you're looking for, it may, you know, perhaps that puts a, uh, puts a flag up and goes, mm, perhaps that's, that's where I'm gonna find a problem. So it's worth looking at the four star reviews because they tend to be, I find, a little more objective. So you might get a slightly more, dare I say, intelligent kind of thing about, you know, a bit more thought through type of response. This as an example, um, also has uh, two uh, replies to it, this particular one. So I looked at what the replies were. So Rick, Ricard asked about this mobile apps and the author, Tiny PNG, came back specifically with an answer. And uh, albeit it was a couple of years ago, it gave an answer. So firstly, he raised a, a concern and the, the developer could come back with an answer and a, and a solution. And under, further underneath there, the Ricard himself had come back and said, tiny PNG rocks, which either tells me he's terribly cool or he's about 12, not sure which, <clears throat> but not my language. Um, but anyway, that's encouraging. That's, uh, that's a sign of things to come. Now, the converse of that, of course, is the one star reviews and you get quality stuff like, it's absolute shite, which again, I find one star reviews tend to be written about two in the morning because they tend to be written when you've had a really bad day, it's not done what you want it to do, the support guy's not come back and given you any help whatsoever, and you're getting really, really hacked off, and you have, you know, it's just the end of a bad day, and you, in a fit of fury, you hammer down on the keys, just like yeah, one star. So you tend to get very emotive type stuff in one star reviews. So reviews, very useful, but you no, know, seek a balance look for objective kind of responses, and it might give you some of the stuff you're looking for. A word of warning, what you regard as a five star or a four star or whatever, ain't necessarily what the other guy considers to be a five star or a four star. Um, exhibit number one, um, this is one for Adplug, which is a, an ad, um, ad advertisement subscription thing. It's only got two four star reviews. A, exactly what I needed, or B, this plugin sucks. And they're both four stars, go figure. I have no idea, but 
so bear that in mind. Now, the, the dates are a bit slightly, but um, why the kind of, why would you put four stars and then say this plugin sucks? It doesn't, anyway, that's his problem. So nobody's perfect. So take them as you will. That's what review, that's what reviews do. Okay, so I've chosen the plugin I want. What do I do now? You install it. Word of warning, may culprit, I've done this and may, uh, made the mistake. When you install a plugin, make a note of which version it is and when you installed it. Because it doesn't matter how much testing you do, there's a possibility that there's a conflict somewhere or something doesn't quite work the way you expect it to and whatever. And I don't know how, I don't care how brilliant you are and how much time you can devote to your uh, precious website, you can't test, you can, so I'll qualify that, you can't, you seldom can test everything. And chances are <clears throat> your user or your, worse still, your customer comes back two months later and says, you know, last couple of months, this, this, we're doing this funny thing, it does this and it does this, and you think, oh, since when? Oh, I don't know, it's in the last couple of months or couple of weeks or whatever, and you go, okay. You go back and find that's the time you, you updated that plugin. Maybe test that thing and try it again with a previous version and find, oh yeah, actually, it, um, that's when it started going wrong, and you've, you've, you've missed it. So note the date and, and the version number, and keep a copy of the version you get. Um, the easiest way to do that is rather than installing your, uh, your plugin directly from the website, download it to your own PC or Mac first, and then upload it from your machine onto the, onto the website. Only means you've got your own personal copy of that version. Um, again, a bit nerdy, a bit anal, take that what you will, but it means you've got a copy, and if you, it might be easier to find that copy of the, old, the previous version than it is going back to the developer and trying to track through their, however efficient or not their, um, their site is to find a previous version and, and get it back. <clears throat> but before you go, whoa, waffle in and with a, uh, with a plugin, you do need to test it. Because it doesn't matter who you spoke to at WordCamp, which review you read, uh, which forum you went on and so on and so forth, does it do the thing you want it to do? because the chances are your requirements are slightly different to anyone else who's, who's used, the, used the plugin. And obviously the more esoteric they get, the more particular that might be. So how do you test it? Well, easiest place to test it is on the site itself. And of course, if you're not live yet, that, that might be ideal, because at least you can test it in the environment it's within which it's gonna live. But pick your moment, because if your users or your customers testing at the same time, you might be a bit, bit disconcerted if <laughs> things are changing in and out as, he's, as, they're, as they're using it. Um, and it, that goes to some extent for, um, for live sites as well. Eventually you've got to put it on your live site and test it. And that's why um, site designers tend to be working to stupid hours of the morning because they're hoping no one else is looking at the site for, uh, itself. However, if you can't use the site itself, check a staging site. Does your host provide a staging site? Um, 34SB, who are standing out there, um, provide a free staging site when you sign up with them. SiteGround, who's another big hosting company, they do the same thing. Very, very useful. Take an instant copy of your uh, website, <coughs> and you've immediately got a, uh, an exact copy that you can practice and beat up the hell, you know, beat, add all the stuff you like into it, hopefully without anyone else being able to see it. Um, the other thing to do is to set it up on your own, set up a website on your own machine. Um, there's a uh, system called Local by Flywheel, which is very straightforward for setting up <coughs> your own, basically virtual machine on your own PC or Mac, <coughs> and basically sets up a, 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 your own copy of the site. And you can, again, no, no way anyone's going to see that because it's only existing in your machine anyway. Great way to try things out. <coughs> Slightly more complicated, but basically the same deal. WAMP, MAMP, and ZAMP. That's basically Windows, Mac, and the other one. Shows my technical prowess there. <coughs> um, but basically those are, again, virtual machines that allow you to set up your own, uh, your own environment. Um, so you've got it up, you've got it running, brilliant. 
<coughs> one of the questions you reg reg or get regularly talked about, I can't get asked, but <coughs> regular debate about is how many plugins is too many plugins for my website? And <coughs> my general principle would be keep it lean and mean. But depending on how big and complex your site is, depends on how many you're gonna how many plugins you're gonna you're gonna require. If you take a very simple theme, it might be that you need lots of plugins to get it to do all the sexy stuff you want to do. Um, but <coughs> if you're looking to do that, it's worth continuing to test your plugins because if you stop using them, you uh, you need to deactivate and delete and human stuff. So if you've got an option to take a plug a plugin out, do so. Just be careful to remember what it actually does because you might have found that something, some other element of it that you'd forgotten all about it does and suddenly it's gone out of the site. But because you're a good folk and test all your stuff, then you'll spot that and it won't be a problem. And you can, you can sneak it back in while nobody's looking. So you'll be fine. So, um, yeah, there's lots of people with an awful lot of plugins on their websites. If it works and it's not causing you grief, there's actually nothing wrong with it. But just for the sake of your own peace of mind and uh, ability to get, get to bed before midnight, then keeping it lean and mean is make, uh, makes sense. And finally, do back it up before you start updating everything. I know it's a bore, I know it takes ages and depending on the size of your website can be crushing your dull, but I know through painful experience, if you don't, uh, it doesn't have to lead to some late nights. <coughs> um, so yeah, there's thousands, of, no, there's lots of options for backing up. There's lots of plugins that help you back up. Things like Cloudflare, things like BoltPress. Uh, many others are available. Check on wordpress.org, but do make a backup because it doesn't have to make life easier, particularly if someone's paid you for the privilege. Um, they kind of assume that it's there and um, rebuilding the site from scratch when you've, uh, rebuilding the shape of the uh, site isn't bad. Trying to remember all the content they've given you is, can be more of a challenge. And finally, finally, major choice, relax. Well, for a bit anyway. Um, but you need to keep alert. You need to keep testing. There's lots of other changes going on. Your site is never finished. For one thing, it can always be better. But also, there's other stuff happening. Um, you know, WordPress is, is continually making changes for security reasons um, and little things like Gutenberg coming along just to make life interesting. Um, <clears throat> but your theme gets updated and, your, and the plugins, both the one you just put in and all the other ones, uh, tend to get updated too. So you need to check, you know, keep, keep your eyes open and check those. And that's really all I have to say. Thank you for listening. Okay, thanks very much, Jeremy. Has anyone got any questions? Yep. Do you recommend updating your plugins to yourself um, and have a system for that, or would you be okay with the host doing all the updating on anything? Uh, it's a good question. I, I'm sufficiently paranoid that I would, I would sooner do it myself, but I've still got um, the time and sufficiently few uh, websites that I can have the luxury of doing that. Um, the, the danger of letting the host do it is that um, they apply to things like WordPress updates and so on, and they just th throw those in. So long as they let you know it's happening, that kind of helps, because <coughs> it's kind of embarrassing, and particularly if you're taking money for the privilege, when your client rings up and says, um, you know, the site's down, don't you? And you don't. Um, uh, so practice your, um, of course I know it's down, I'm working on it right now response, that's kind of, that can be kind of useful. Um, and I was hoping you'd notice that just to check that you're keeping an eye on it. All that is kind of useful. But personally, I would, uh, I, I, I like to do it myself. I like that level of control. <clears throat> and I like this, I like the element that says, I decide when it, it goes live or I will agree with my customer customers when it goes live 
because it makes it look like I'm in charge and I know what I'm doing, which is always useful. Well, yeah, there's, there's, there's an old IT adage, which is you never go for the point zero of anything, whether it's an operating system or a theme or, or, or anything. And I must admit, <coughs> personally, 5.0 well, sounds terribly exciting, but doesn't really fill me with a great, great, great deal of confidence right now. So I might just wait a little bit. Um, unless they're going to make radical, radical changes, or there's something radical on the security side of things. Um, my temptation would be uh, just wait and let someone else take the steam and the, and the, and the hassle before I jump in there. Um, but I shall be testing 5.0, but I will be doing it on staging site, preferably with sandbags built up either side and with a tin hat on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I guess from a plugin, because they tend to be sort of developed by um, much smaller organizations deciding to go from a version 1.7.11.12.3 to 1.2 or 2.0 even. Okay, what have they changed? Have they just changed the numbers for the hell of it because they'd run out or it's hard, to, it's sometimes hard to tell, but occasionally, I mean, Jetpack was famous, a famous one, obviously Jetpack massively uh, used, uh, had a terrible reputation at one stage because it had been built once and then had umpteen things built onto the side of it. And it was this big, cumbersome mess of whatever. And I challenged someone at Automatic and said, it's this terrible little thing. And they said, well, no, actually, we did rebuild it from scratch and it's actually a lot slicker now. And I do, and I do use it now. So I'm a kind of a, kind of a convert. Um, I say kind of because I haven't found out all it does yet. So I'm still learning on that one. But that one was one that actually said, no, we're going to go for a and, and a, a whole new version, and we just strip, they stripped the whole thing down and built it up again. Yes? Have you ever had any kind of horror stories where uh, a plugin has got to be developed or taken out of the uh, uh, plugin store because it's a uh, you know, buy it? Uh, and uh, you know, what do you do if you're relying on any kind of piece of functionality? Yeah, that's that's. That's kind of a, it's the sort of thing that keeps you awake at night, isn't it? It's, it's, um, there was one, and I'm now desperately trying to remember what it's called. Um, but it was built, it was, it was developed in Australia, and basically it, um, it was one of the first plugins I'd seen, and it wasn't, wasn't a very particularly clever one, and it certainly wasn't the one I was, I was reliant on, but it was kind of, I, th I thought it was quite good in terms of building, and it was, it was called uh, something white label, um, white label. And all it did was, when you go to your login screen, rather than just having the regular WP login, it had it could, you could put your own logo or the logo for the company on it. Which, when I put it in the customer, then oh look, I've got my own logo. And that's kind of useful. And it it stopped and and stopped being supported and so on and so forth. And I was just at the point of going, I need to scratch around and find something else and, and start that search process again. When actually another company picked it up and and, and took on the sport, which was like, yeah, okay, T touch wood and. You know, that's as kind of close as it's got. But you're right, occasionally, stuff, something that you regard as key to your site and the way things work, just you know, the, the developer loses interest. Now, if you're lucky, he tells you he's lost, he or she tells you they've lost interest and say, look, forget it, I'm not going to be around, you know, I'm not going to answer your questions anymore, I've gone, I'm going to do something else. If you're unlucky, they just leave it and the thing just drifts off into the ether. So you do have to kind of keep an eye on these things. and. The chances are you seldom have to reinvent wheels. Apologies to developers out there. I'm not a developer, as you might have gathered. Um, you know, chances are somebody's done the thing you want to do some, in some form. Now, it might be tacked onto a few other things and you might have to adjust a little bit, but the chances are that there's something out there that does something pretty damn close to what you were doing before. So there are, there's usually alternatives. Yes, sir. <laughs> right. Am I in balance or am I weird either way? Um, yeah, I, the worst I've come across was somebody cheerfully said to me, yeah, I've got 72 on mine, which seemed a lot. 
um, if it if it's doing what you want it to do, and it's not crawling like a snail, and it's not keeping you awake at night because one's getting in the way of the other one, I'd, I, I'm tempted to say, yeah, it's fine. I'm sure you could pare it down with some effort, but if, but if it's if it's actually doing what it needs to do, um, I wouldn't lose sleep over it. Anyone else? Okay. Another big hand for Jeremy. Thank you.